Let's take a look at your market news now. Asian shares slumped again this morning as fears grew over the rapidly spreading coronavirus. However, losses were contained as new infections fell in China and investors expected a further stimulus from Beijing to support the domestic economy. The Nikkei was down 0.8%. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng losing 0.7% and the Shanghai Composite Index falling 0.8%. To Wall Street now, where the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 tumbled 3% on Tuesday in their fourth straight day of losses as the coronavirus spread further around the world and investors offloaded risky assets as they struggled to gauge the economic impact. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 3.15% to 27,081 points. The S&P 500 lost 3.3% to 3,128 points and the Nasdaq Composite dropped 2.7%. 77% to 8,965 points. We're going to find out what's happening with the rest of the markets, but we're also going to cross to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, where Michael Trahan from Vestec Asset Management is standing by. Very good afternoon to you, Michael. We're going to speak about the coronavirus and global markets more. What are the markets expecting from the 2020 budget that's going to be delivered in about half an hour? Yeah, I think in general there's a bit of caution around. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. Uh, depending on uh, what is said at 2 o'clock uh, when the embargo is lifted on the budget speech and we all know the fine, uh, finer details of what's coming, uh, our currency could go either way and uh, as our currency goes, our stock market will probably follow. Uh, but I think at the moment it's just let's wait and see, let's be cautious. Uh, but I think in general uh, people are, are hoping that there's uh, uh, good signals but uh, not, not uh, overly expecting it. People are trying to look into the crystal ball and see what exactly may come out. Specifically from an investor and a market point of view, what would the top three issues that must be addressed at budget be? Yeah, so if we go back to the medium-term budget speech, the, the one graph that sent uh, shivers down investors' spines was uh, our debt-to-GDP ratio and the forecast of it, or what it was looking like going forward. Uh, that uh, forecast showed that debt-to-GDP wasn't going to slow down anytime soon, whereas uh, a year before that it had shown that in uh, around about now it would start to level off. So that's probably the first and the biggest thing that investors would be looking at is uh, what our debt-to-GDP ratio look like going forward. Uh, and then from that there's two components. The one component is how does the revenue side of things look? How has SARS collections looked? Uh, at the medium term budget there was a forecast that they were going to miss uh, collections by 50 billion rand. Is that still the case? Um, and then on the expenditure side of things, uh, where has uh, money been prioritized? Is it in growth and development and infrastructure or is it on uh, bailing out SOEs and uh, spending it on uh, ex effectively expenses instead of uh, I infrastructure development? So those are some of the keys that investors will be looking looking at. We are seeing behind you the rand sitting about 15.27 to the dollar. Of course, as we get closer to the time, we might see more changes. And afterwards, uh, we also definitely going to see changes around the rand to the dollar. What are you expecting may happen if that speech isn't well received? Yeah, so uh, the big thing at the moment is uh, investors are saying, okay, we need to see what happens in the speech to decide uh, uh, what happens or try to forecast what Moody's is going to do in terms of our debt rating. Uh, if the speech uh, isn't strong enough, then uh, more than likely investors say Moody's is for sure going to downgrade us. And if that's the case, you'll start seeing the RAND uh, weaken immediately. Uh, not helping our cause at the moment is uh, the global fear around the coronavirus. And that's part of the reason that the RAND is looking so weak today is, is just a sell-off in general uh, with risky assets and uh, unfortunately the, uh, S South Africa as the emerging market is considered a risky uh, asset and uh, uh, money has been leaving uh, partly because of the coronavirus as well. So uh, a bit of a double whammy for our currency. Mm. Let's talk about uh, that impact of the coronavirus specifically on the US markets. What's happening there? Yeah, so U.S. markets have had two days of over 3% uh, sell-off. Uh, that, that doesn't happen very often, so it shows you uh, uh, how worried investors are. And the reason for the worry is uh, less about the virus itself, but more about uh, the impact that this has on uh, global economies. Uh, uh, effectively, a third, of, or a third to a half of China is currently sort of on quarantine, on lockdown, uh, so their production isn't going through. If uh, China isn't producing, it isn't consuming, uh, commodities uh, aren't being 
being supplied, they aren't being bought. Uh, China isn't producing iPhones, they aren't producing cars. So uh, you can see this has a very big uh, ripple impact on uh, commodities generally and then uh, companies at a further level and uh, investors saying, okay, how big is this impact going to be and how long is it going to last? And at the moment, we just don't know. Um, and when there's uncertainty, investors, or I should say traders, prefer to sell first, ask question later. And that's uh, the, the current environment that we're in. Okay, let's talk about then the impact of the coronavirus on China. We know that that lockdown that you've spoken about and, and the effects of that at the moment. Is there a way of looking into the future and saying with uh, Beijing's assistance to the Chinese economy, with the money that the central bank is also trying to pour in to mitigate the effect uh, of the coronavirus, what perhaps can we see in a month or two months and what will that picture look like? Yes, I think the big thing is uh, how, how soon do we get uh, a vaccine for the coronavirus. Uh, trials are going to start this week from what I'm reading uh, to see if the, what has been developed is effective. Uh, if there is a vaccine developed, you see a lot of people calm down. The, the need for quarantine is reduced. Uh, the Chinese economy goes back into full steam. And then as you say, it's going back into full steam with a lot of financial stimulus behind it. Uh, I was reading earlier that uh, Hong Kong is considering giving uh, each of their registered residents a thousand three hundred dollars to try uh, help smooth things over over the short term um, and it just to increase cash flow in the, in the economy leads to increased demand and the hope is that uh, that increased demand can help make up for the lost demand that we've had over the last month okay and let's talk briefly about volatility indexes uh, spiking what's happening there yeah, so effectively uh, when investors get worried, uh, uh, share prices move all over the place and the reason for that is uh, there's a lot of people buying, there's a lot of people selling and when there's lots of uncertainty, the market struggles to, to find what is the correct price for something. Uh, if you have a look at uh, something like ShopRite yesterday, they opened up 10% on really good results and they ended up closing down 2%. Uh, that's effectively a 14, uh, I mean a 12% move uh, across the day that shows high volatility uh, and and volatility in the market is a measure of risk. Uh, so we're seeing higher risk, higher volatility, and that's just uh, the link to the higher uncertainty uh, in the market at the moment. Michael Chen from Vestact Asset Management, thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon.